Somebody shout hallelujah to the Lord. We are excited that we are in 2022. Are you excited? You don't sound like you're excited. Are you excited that you are in 2022? Praise the Lord. See, this year, our team is all things new. All things new. Your God, my God, he is in the business of transformation. He's in the business of making all things to become new. So this year, I want you to just trust in the Lord, rest in the Lord. You see, we live in a season where everybody is on the edge, right? Fear has become a common theme in every household. Fear of what? COVID, right? That's the most you know, that's the fear that is gripping every heart. But you see, I got a word for you this morning. The Bible says, fear not, for I am with you. Say, so fear not. The God that made the heavens and the earth, the one who created the viruses, because the Bible says, for all things we are made for his pleasure. Nothing made. He said there was nothing made that was not made by him. And in him all things consist. That means everything holds together in God. Including COVID virus. So if you have that understanding, if we have that understanding as children of God, then we cannot live in fear because our God is a God of all things. So this morning we are going to pray. We are going to pray, especially for all of our members our pastors, Mr. Josh, and his family, and every other family in Mission Ebenezer that are going through this season of COVID. See the book of Psalm, Psalm 107 says, don't worry, I'll go into the word of God. We're going to preach briefly. I'm not going to take long because we're going to pray this morning. This is the first Sunday of the year and of the month. We're going to stake, I mean, we're going to set the stage for this year because it's a year of a new thing. It says, the book of Psalm. Verse 8 says, all that men would praise, Psalm 107, verse 8, all that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebel against the word of God and contain the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, there was none to help. They cried. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And that's what we are going to do this morning. Because this COVID is problematic for us. Is that true or not? Is that true? It is troublesome. It is worrisome. So we have come to that point that we need to cry out to God 
We need to cry out to God. And he says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bounds in asunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. So this morning, if you can indulge me, stand for a moment if you're able to stand. I want us to lift up our voice this morning and cry to the Lord. Say, Lord, enough of COVID in our church. We are done with COVID in our church for this year, 2022. We want healing. We want healing. After all, the word of God says the afflictions of the Egyptians will not be our portion. That's what he said. You know, the afflictions that are afflicting others will not be our portion because he's the Lord, our healer. He's the Lord, our healer. Let's talk to the Lord for healing this morning. Open your mouth. I just want you to pray. Make sure you are praying this morning. Ask the Lord to release his healing power, to release his healing power. Let's use Pastor Josh and his family as a point of contact this morning. Open your mouth. I want to hear you pray. This is not a time for silent prayers. This is not a time you pray in your heart. When that time comes, you will do so. But right now, I want everybody open your mouth. If you don't know what to say, say, Lord, I need healing. Lord, release healing. Lord, release healing power. Healing power. Healing power. Healing power. Let the power of your deliverance this morning be made manifest. Among us here at Mission Ebenezer, the Bible said men cried out to the Lord. Open your mouth. Cry out to the Lord this morning for healing. Cry out to the Lord this morning for deliverance. Cry out to the Lord. We need miracles. We need miracles. We need healing over every member of Mission Ebenezer. We cannot live in fear. This morning, Lord, we ask, oh God, that you pour out your power. Let the sick among us be healed. Lord, you say healing is the children's bread. Therefore, Lord, we receive healing in our bodies. As many that are bruised emotionally, we receive healing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we exalt your name, O oh God. Lord, we exalt your name, O oh God. You are worthy. Lord, this is a year of a new thing. We want to start off with sound health in our bodies. We want to start this year not with sickness. We want to start this year with sound mind. Lord, we want to be healthy. We want to be strong to serve you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, oh God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. All right, you may be seated. We're going to have time to pray later. Because I would like to keep this message very short. You see, this year, 2022... One of the things that God is ministering to our hearts, and I want to communicate to us as a people, as Mission Ebenezer people, is the fact that you have to be intentional in whatever you are doing this year. Tell your neighbor you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. You cannot do things at random this year. Because it's a year that God will do a new thing. And this morning, I just want to talk briefly 
on the place of intercession in what God is doing. Or what God is going to do. The role of intercession. The role of prayer. As a church. As individuals. You see. God cannot do anything on this earth without the involvement of man. Without your involvement, without my involvement, you see, it's very, you see, God can do all things, right? You believe that, right? God can do all things. He can do anything that he chooses to do. But you see, when it comes to the redemption of the earth, he committed it into the hand of you and me. When it comes to the salvation of man, he gave you that responsibility. He gave me that responsibility. When it comes to bringing the kingdom of God on the earth, that belongs to you. The Bible said the heavens of heavens belongs to God and the earth he has given to children of men for inheritance. He has given you that responsibility. But you see, there is one channel that God has chosen to get involved. And that is the channel of communication he has opened between you and him. Prayer. Prayer. You activate the word of God through prayer, through intercession, through seeking God's face. And that's what we want to look at this morning. The place of intercession. 2022. All things are being made new. But all things cannot be made new without your involvement. I can say from now till eternity that all things are made new. But if I'm not participating... And what God is doing, it cannot be done. But especially in the sense that I will stand and say, Lord, this is my neighborhood. I want a change in it. This is my family. I want a change in it. Because, okay, if you want to change, I am also ready. James said, draw near unto the Lord. He will draw near unto you. So the first step is for you to draw near unto him. And he will draw near unto you. You see, God said in Genesis 18. When God, I don't want to read the entire story, but you see, when God wanted to do something new on the earth, I believe at that point has not been done. What was it? Well, God was getting news in heaven that Sodom and Gomorrah is so corrupt that they complained of their corruption is coming to God on daily basis. It got to a point, God said, you know what? I'm going to come down and see for myself if what I'm hearing in heaven is actually true. If what I'm hearing in heaven is actually true, I'm coming down for myself. So on his way to the place, he met a man called Abraham. He met his friend. You see, that's, their friend began to develop from there. You see, at that point, God said, can I do anything without, first of all, telling it to my friend, Abraham? Can you imagine God, the creator of the whole universe? He can do all things all by himself. But he said, can I do anything without first talking to my friend, Abraham? 
Jesus called you his friend. He said, you are no longer my servants, but you are now, what? My friends. So in other words, the same position Abraham has with God is the same position that you are in now. So God cannot do anything here without first of all telling you. Why was God interested in telling Abraham what he wants to do? He was going down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. At that point, is a new thing that has not been done on the earth. But he was going to do it. But he needed a man to intervene. He needed a man to say something. He needed a man to change his mind over what he has chosen to do. So that's why he has to talk with his friend. Because he wants his friend to act. Somebody say act. What happened? Look at here. In verse 20. Verse 19 says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. That means he knows that Abraham is going to call for a prayer session. Hallelujah. He's going to call for an intercessory meeting. He knows Abraham. He's going to call for prayer. When there is danger, he's going to call for prayer. He said, I know him. I know him. And he says, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom, he's telling Abraham now, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is common to me. If not, I will know. Verse 22 says, And the men turned their face from hence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Verse 23 says, And Abraham drew near. This year, 2022, is a year that you as a person must make up your mind to draw near unto God. You have to draw near you ran away in 2021. You were far off in 2021. I was far off in 2021. I was prayerless in 2021. My prayer life was nothing to write home about in 2021. But God is saying, because I want to do something new in Mission Ebenezer, you have to draw near unto me. This is a year you don't have to be far away. This is a year that your prayer life must be revived. The Bible says Abraham drew near. He stood before God. That is a position of intercession. It's a position of prayer. It's a position of authority. It's a position... That a man takes to be able to take responsibility for the kingdom. So this year you must say, I'm going to take up this responsibility for God. Even here at Mission Ebenezer. You must be strong. The Bible says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You must be strong in 2022. The Bible says, in quietness of spirit and in confidence shall you be established. Abraham drew near. 
Because God is constantly looking for men that will stand in the gap. He's looking for men that will take responsibility for him. Will you say this year, I'm not going to be the kind of Christian that I was in 2021. I'm going to spend more time in the presence of the Lord. Again, when God wants to do something different, he looks for a man either to encourage him or to help him change his mind as to what he wants to do. Look at this. The book of Numbers, chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. I'll tell you the story again. Numbers chapter 14. See, Moses sent out the spies to go and spy through God. God wanted the land he was going to give to the children of Israel. The land that is flowing with milk and honey. So God, through Moses, asked them to go spy the land. So they came back and brought an evil report. And belittled God. Made God so small before his enemies. And God was angry at his people. Now look at what God said. Verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be uh, that they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make thee a greater nation and might Tear than they. Stop there. God came to Moses. He said, Lord, he said, you know what? I'm done with these people. I'll kill all of them here and I'll raise for you, you Moses. Think about that offer. Think about your position now. God made that offer to you. That you know what? I'll wipe all these people away. I'm going to raise for you, Moses, a mightier people, stronger than these people you are looking at. People that, you know, if I raise them for you, they're never going to disobey me. They're going to do what I want. Why is God telling Moses? Because he said, can I do a thing without telling my friend? What did Moses say? Moses said, ah, uh, uh, no, God. In as much as I would like, instead of these people now being called Israelites, they'll be called Moses Light. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? Instead of them being called Israelite, that's now Moses Light. Right? That's awesome. It's a good thing for me. Eh? But he said, God, no, 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 no. That's not how it should be done. And that's not what I want. Think about it, God. You see, in the place of intercession, the Bible says, bring your strong reasons. Make your case. Make your case. Bring your strong reasons. And Moses has to raise an argument before God. And say, God, think about it. How does it sound? Even before the hidden, the Egyptians, all the things that you have done among the hidden, and all of a sudden, it will now be said that you brought them out of Egypt and came to this place and killed all of them. God was looking for a man to help him change his mind. We are talking about this year, 2022. It's a year we must 
take up responsibility for God. It's a year we must say to God, here am I, send me. Not sending my brother, not sending my sister, but God, I am here, I am willing, use me. Use me. Moses had an opportunity. But he said, no, God, that is not how it should be done. When God wants to do a new thing, he needs a man. This year, are you available for God to be used? Are you available? Are you willing to be used by God? What are the responsibilities you're going to take up for God in this year, 2022? Listen, friends, it is not business as usual. Tell your neighbor, it's not business as usual. Please tell somebody, 2022 is not business as usual. It is not. It's a year we must take up our mantle. It's a year we must put on our weapons of warfare. It's not a year of sluggishness. Whether in the things of life affair or in spiritual things, it's not a year of sluggishness. It's a year you must be strong. Spirit, soul, and body. You cannot allow your heart to faint you this year. Tell someone, be strong. I say, tell someone like you mean it, be strong. Be strong. One more time, be strong. Hallelujah. We must be strong in this year. The book of Revelation Revelation chapter 4. You see, the Bible says that John was given the revelation of Jesus. You see, at that point, before John brought the revelation, People just know Jesus as Messiah. He died, was crucified. But there was not much about Jesus. And it's, honestly, it's, it's so sad, uh, Pastor Kobe, that the devil have made a lot of us Christians not to pay attention to the revelation of our king. We get scared to read the book of Revelation. It scares us. But the Bible says the revelation about Jesus. He is your Lord. So why won't you know about him? Why won't you open that book and read? And understand what has been revealed. Because John said what has been revealed is for the time to come. And we are in that time. We are in that season. So you need to know, this is the year you must begin to open the word of God. And get understanding. But you see, before John was given the revelation of Jesus, if you look at from chapter 1 to chapter 3, he was just... Like Isaiah, when Isaiah started, he was just rambling, giving what he thought was the deal, right? Prophesying what he was, what he thought was the real prophecy, the real revelation, until just like Isaiah, 
The Bible says, God took coals of fire and touched his lips and said, I have sanctified you. Immediately the coals of fire touches. He said, woe is me. Oh, my goodness. I thought I've been seeing stuff. Man, I think I am on the other side. It was from that moment the true prophecy began to show. And now look at this. In the book of Revelation chapter 4, before the majesty and the authority of Jesus was made revealed to him, was revealed to him, the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord say, come up here. You see, John, you've been on this side, but there's something I want to show you. What I want to reveal to you, you cannot get it where you are right now. I need you to come up a little bit. He said to him, come up here. This is a season, this year, we must make up our mind that I'm going to step up my game. I need to come up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, he says, verse 1, after I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. The first voice which I heard was as it were. Now, that was his first voice. So, you look at from verse 1 to, from chapter 1 to chapter 3. What has been speaking to him? Right? But now he began to hear a different voice because the communication at this level is higher things that he has not heard or seen before and he needed to be in an elevated position. You see, there are certain things God will not communicate to us where we are right now. We need to step up. There are things he will not show us if we continue to live our life the way we are living it. He's not going to reveal to us. We must do what? Come up here. He says, I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here and I will show the things which must be hereafter. I will show you things which must be here after. Come up here. This is a year we must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Allow God to use us as instrument of praise, as instrument of power, as instrument of authority within our families, within our neighborhoods, within our communities. It's a year we must learn to wait on the Lord. The book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, you read through that. You see, the Bible says Daniel needed sudden change around him. He needed sudden information from heaven because he knew that that kind of information cannot be gotten on the earth. He needed that from heaven. He waited on God. He prayed and fasted for 21 days. For 21 days. And the angel that brought information to him said, Yeah, right from the, you know, the first day you prayed, your prayer was heard in heaven. Your prayer was heard. But you see, there are other mysteries that you, Daniel, was not aware of that was happening in the spirit realm. I was held up. I was held up by the prince of Persia, the power that controlled the Persian region. He doesn't want you to have that information. I was held up for 21 days. But you see, your prayer 
brought a reinforcement, made God to send another angel who came and intervened so that I can come to you. So without your intercession, I will still be in prison where I am. So sometimes you pray that your messengers, your helpers be released from wherever they are held. Because there are some messengers, blessings that are coming your way that the enemy can be held up. And yet you are not aware. Daniel was not aware. But you see, he continued in what he knew best to do. And that is to pray. 2022. We must be the people that praise. We must be a people that pray. Prayer is the key that we need for the new things that God is going to do. Hallelujah. As we begin to round up, I just want you to under God Make up your mind what you want this year to be. What are you going to take up for God in this year? All things have been made new. What is your place? In your family, what role are you going to play to make sure the plans and the purposes of God is fulfilled? What mantra are you going to take up for the people that you love, you care about? Is it going to continue as usual? Or are you going to decide, you know what, I'm done with this. I need to take up more responsibility for God. As we begin to pray, I want you to talk to the Lord. I want you to talk to the Lord. Ask God to kindle a fresh fire in your spirit. We need an awakening in our spirit. We need a stirring up of our spirit. Ask God for a stirring up at this hour. Ask the Lord. To release his power on you, upon you. Bring transformation to all aspects of your life. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Ask God to release his power. The Bible says he gives power. Power to the faint. And to them that have no might, it would increases their strength. This year, I want my strength to be increased. I want my spiritual strength. I'm done being a baby Christian. I want to serve God this year, 2022, with all my heart. I want you to ask God for his anointing upon you.